Welcome everyone at the Masters of the Code channel. In today's video I will talk in details about overlay root file system, about pros and benefits of using that kind of file system. And it's really easy on the modern Linux distributions and it's, uh, it's perfectly suited for devices like devices working in kiosk mode when you want to implement uh, easy reset, easy restore options, functionality, etc. So let's start. I've uh, already logged in to my Raspberry Pi 4 and let's start from the configuration. So the configuration uh, is being kept in etc overlay root.conf and the actual part we need to add uh, is at the bottom. I've disabled that uh, option, we don't need it here, but I've also added that uh, overlay root line and I've stated the device with proper label which will consist the, the overlay. Uh, it's also the X4 file system and at the end you have that option recurse equals zero and it means that I only want that overlay root file system to cover the, the root file system without uh, the sub mounts and if you want a different be behavior you can put the one here so it's the configuration file and here on the ubuntu server on raspberry pi the next uh, file responsible for the um, overlay root file system uh, is located in boot uh, firmware and the file is named uh, cmdline.txt so we have here the parameters for the kernel during boot and for now we have that option overlay root equals disabled it's the nice option you are able to disable the whole uh, mechanism at uh, any time you want and i have it disabled right now so we don't see any uh, any overlay uh, root uh, x4 file system mounted right now i will uh, also reboot activate it later so you will be able to see uh, how it works uh, so we are able to add that option and it, uh, it's uh, really useful for uh, development for example so we can only test that uh, overlay root file system for a while but then if we want to change something on the actual root x4 file system uh, we are able to easily disable it and let's see for the partitions also you can see that we have the system boot we have the write table partition the actual root file system and we have the overlay partition that uh, that will be used for the uh, overlay roots uh, here uh, now i think we can we can activate it so boot firmware and cmd line so we will no, not that one uh, so delete to the end and we can reboot I'm back and what we can do is df command which will show us the the mount points also so as you can see we have that additional mount points so right now we have that overlay root for the root which is some file system similar to tem fs it is only uh, in memory and we have uh, actual root mounted here as the read only and the overlay uh, here and of course when you try to list uh, directories and stuff it doesn't differ from the uh, situation where uh, where you had only root mounted so right now uh, let's see uh, how we can use it uh, combined with uh, init rd i've also added that to etc init ram fs loose some additional configuration the subdirectories the stuff here is split between hooks and actual scripts so in hooks you have some dependencies so let's see our file for 
our mechanism uh, which is able for resetting uh, settings and for also restoring settings from the archive. We need some additional tools, additional binaries. For example, we need tar binary, uh, bzip2 binary, and also we need a whole Python free because I have that uh, script for testing if the recent button had been pushed and it needs to be checked on the GPIO bus and it's written in Python. So what we can do? First, uh, I've included some helper functions file for the initram ABS tools and uh, in that helper file you have, for example, the copy underscore exec function, which is simple function uh, which allows you to copy some file from the root file system uh, to the uh, directory inside uh, initRD. Uh, of course, it's uh, being triggered during the initRD uh, build process. But also for each binary, we need to check uh, libraries. So those uh, files in lib subdirectory with uh, so or so.version extension and uh, in case uh, such files are uh, present because uh, you can also uh, have some binaries compiled statically so in that case you don't need any uh, library files but uh, usually uh, you need some library files and you can easily uh, check those files with that command and then using find also uh, copy those uh, those files in uh, sub uh, directories also but for python additionally we need to also copy the whole sub directories in the lib with uh, python modules and also we need our our uh, script for testing reset button and uh, for it uh, we could use the copy exec but we want to uh, copy the whole subdirectories recursively uh, so i'm also able to use that special variable and that special variable points me to that uh, temporary directory used to build the whole the whole init rd uh, image and uh, i also do the same for the rest of the binaries uh, but for the rest of the binaries it's sufficient to just uh, do the first uh, first uh, stage uh, without that uh, second stage uh, which is only needed for python so i do it in the for loop so uh, the code uh, looks uh, cleaner that way and the rest of the stuff is located in the script subdirectory and here you can see different uh, stages of the boot process and because we need to act before the local file systems uh, are being mounted we need to tap to the local pre mount phase and here we have the uh, file with the same name and in that file we have the code which is being triggered during every boot and in that code we need to mount data file system actually because we need to check if the uh, archive with uh, settings to restore uh, is present uh, there and uh, if it's true we can uh, continue with the restoration process and uh, that is uh, also why we needed those additional tools uh, to be added to that um, hook hook subdirectory because those uh, binaries as you can see not only tar but also chown or chmod or sleep or any other binary is needed for that script here and of course uh, to save space those binary binaries are not present in the init uh, rd by default so we are uh, doing uh, cleaning here and then restoring archive and uh, moving files it's it's quite simple the other interesting stuff is we can just uh, use the echo to print something on the console because it would uh, be uh, put on the console after uh, the whole init uh, rd process is uh, completed and that way we would we wouldn't uh, see anything here uh, but we would get that delay so 10 seconds and then after everything is completed we would see that uh, message and it wouldn't stop um, here so uh, the, the user is able to uh, to see it so to countermeasure that i use just the echo redirected to the uh, dev uh, tty zero 
which is a device for writing to the same terminal uh, which prints the boot messages. And of course we have the, the else here, the opposite situation. So uh, is the situation we need to test for the uh, push of the reset button and then just uh, clean everything without uh, restoring. And uh, here you could say that uh, adding all those tools to the initRD will cause the uh, size to be really big. But it's also not true because in rather all modern Linux distributions, there is a LZ4 compression tool used to compress uh, the um, initRD files. So those uh, files are really slightly bigger than standard uh, initRD files. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and it's uh, useful to you. Thank you for watching. Bye.